uh, and I'm set up today. I got both harnesses on because we're going to get the sawhorses out of here in a minute. And uh, I'm going to give you a little demonstrations. You'll, you'll see behind me here, I have some nice barbell weights strapped on the back. And you might be thinking, gee, Rob, what'd you do? Get the weight and balance wrong? And you built this really lightweight aircraft and then you strapped 20 pounds onto the back end. And no, that's not the case. Uh, because we don't have the wings mounted here, uh, the cockpit is really nose heavy. So I've put enough weight back here so that when I, uh, when I actually lift the center section like this, it lifts just like it will uh, when the wings are attached. It's not as heavy. This whole thing weighs about 40, 45 pounds like this. Uh, but it gives me a fairly good uh, simulation of what it's going to be like to run with this thing. And that's probably the last thing I want to cover. I'll tell you one more funny story. I'll put up a picture of my original wing here, and you'll see me taking off on the very first flight in this picture. And uh, it was really quite hard to get there. And you might notice I'm sitting a little low in the wing. Uh, and that's because I designed the whole thing up, and I had a seat in there, and I was using technology out of the, uh, well, probably the 70s, uh, on pilot suspension system, I was using a swing set seat much like they used in the Icarus 2, Icarus 5. And, well, I have to admit that I built the whole thing, designed it, built it, uh, got all the components put together. We take it out to test fly, and I never, ever, prior to that, tried to run with it. How dumb is that? <laughs> it's really dumb. I just assumed it was going to work. That's a bad plan. You know what happens when you assume. So, uh, on that aircraft, when I tried to run, the seat went whack, whack, whack up against the pilot's cage. And it was hanging up on the tubes. It was, like, it was a disaster. It was really bad. Neither did a soft harnessing system like this, uh, which is what I rapidly ended up with after that first little flight. Um, so I've learned my lesson, and I've been practicing here in the backyard of picking this thing up and running with it to see if I can actually do it. And besides, I'm not nearly as young now as I used to be then, and... Uh, uh, I can't have anything getting in the way or binding or preventing me from waddling my way into the sky. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be picking this up and setting it down, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, some of the ergonomics involved with lifting an aircraft that's 108 pounds. So stick around. I'm going to flip you around. We're going to come back, and we'll talk about that. Okay, well, I'm back in the aircraft here. Now, I haven't strapped into the suspension system uh, because I want to be able to uh, uh, maneuver around easily for, these, uh, for this particular little uh, segment. Uh, so I'm going to stand up here into the lift harness, and I'm going to lift the glider up and over, at least the center section. I'm going to move over here where I hope you can see me and set it down. Now, here I am on the ground. And this is to be the normal position that I'll be in uh, prior to uh, standing up to launch the glider. And let me tell you, even though this seems like a very simple little situation, uh, it's really quite complex because of the human ergonomics. Once again, that human-machine interface. And originally, I had a much smaller wheel up front. The wheel that's up front here used to be in the back. And when it was down on the ground, my legs were in such a position, I literally couldn't pick the glider up. It was like I was bolted to the ground. I could not move. And that's because this leg here was not in a position that allows me to generate any leverage to do the lift. Uh, and it was strictly because this pilot's cage, the lift harness, the whole setup didn't allow my body to be in a position where I could get sufficient leverage to actually stand up with 108 pounds on my back. Um, this pretty much solves this problem. I did some testing with the lift harness with uh, weights on it, uh, weights that simulated the weight of the aircraft, and practice indoors standing up and going, where does my body have to be in order to do this job? Uh, because I'm no Hercules, and a lot of other pilots aren't either. And i got to design this so that the average schmo out there can lift it up. Uh, and this is what you end up with. Uh, you have to be enough height off the ground so that you can get this leg at 90 degrees and get a foot underneath you for this type of aircraft. And that allows me to literally push with my right foot, just like that, and lift it up. And now I'm in a flying position. I can move a hand down here on the horizontal. 
I'm close to the flap handle. I can operate that. And uh, normally I would be hooked into the suspension straps, which give me enough balance uh, to where I can actually grab the flap handle and, and just let it hang on the harness. And I run the control stick over here. And it gives me enough control over the control stick for the launch. And then on landing, well, you're a little hunched over like this, and you flare, and you come in like this, and you got your little run to land, or you try to bring in a full stall and just stop like this. But then you got to set it down. And when you set it down, it's the reverse situation. You have to have a system where you can pull one leg back like that, fully folded, and the other one 90 degrees. It's the only way you're going to be able to get the aircraft up and down without help. So that was another thing that I had to sort out on the design. And probably, you might have been able to do it in very high-end uh, human-machine interface software, uh, maybe. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of that because I don't know how that software would actually simulate this whole harness system. Uh, and and the, the feel of the harness, the, the harness is not free everywhere. There's some binding and so forth that limits how much you can move. Uh, it's a tricky little problem to solve. So, uh, you, you see how I can now lift and set it down. I think I've solved that problem. And next, we have to find out, can you actually run with the darn thing? And I'm going to reset here, and uh, I think I'm going to be able to give you a little demo of what that's going to be like to run, to take off and land. So, stick around. We'll be back in a few minutes. So there we go. I'm a little out of breath already. Just a few runs. And it's got me a little winded. Of course, I'm not young anymore. <laughs> but this goes to show that, well, designing an aircraft is one thing. Actually, I should back up one more step. Conceiving of an aircraft, dreaming about, that's one thing. Many people do that. Designing that aircraft so it can be built, that's another whole thing. Building it. That's another whole thing, and then making it actually work in real life. Wow, that's another whole thing, too. So, long road, people wonder why this takes 10 years. You know, you raise a family, you work in your garage, it takes some time. Uh, but I'm going to get it done. And thanks to the support of all my patrons and those folks who follow on YouTube, uh, you're going to make it possible, and I really appreciate it. Hang in there with me. Uh, we have a little pause here in the development of the glider. I've had to go out and uh, do a little contract job, which I'm taking a break from today, but that's absorbing most of my time. And that job should be done in about three weeks. Then we'll get back to testing. And keep your fingers crossed. The next time I uh, run with that center section, hopefully the wings will be attached and I take off. So until then, I'll say fly safe and bye for now.